I hate traveling by myself. I hate it. Fail to plan, plan to fail. What do you think of Mr. Claudius? Thinks he'd like to go out, but we had this stocking made in honor of you. It's white. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't care. He wants to go out. It is brutalizingly cold today. Not gonna lie, it is so cold. I think it's like 23 degrees. We're really testing this coat out. It's supposedly effective as low as like negative 20 degrees. I don't know though. We have to upgrade Rudy's coat situation. So I have to run four miles today and I'm also doing a cooking demonstration and I have to fly out to LA. That's right, you heard it. I am traveling during my 30 day challenge. In case you missed it, I am spending the next 30 days eating out of my own meal planner, the Korean vegan meal planner. I'm sticking to the 80-20 plan in an effort to get back into running shape. My friend is opening up a restaurant in Los Angeles and I promised him I would be there for the opening. So leaving for LA right after my cooking demo today, and I just have so much to do. I barely packed. I have to get ready for the cooking demo. I haven't finished today's vlog and I haven't pushed out my newsletter. I also have several like house sealer items that I need to take care of before I leave. And once again, I've been tempted to just not run because that's an hour of my day that I can get back to do some of these other things. But every time I feel tempted to do that, I remember that it's not about time management. It's about priority management. And running is a commitment that I made to myself. And it's not just running itself that is a priority to me. Keeping promises to myself, that's a priority to me. While vlogging and obviously the cooking demonstration, all of those things are priorities as well none of that trumps the commitments I made to me and I feel like that's important to do every single day so while I love running and it's really important to me my health my mental health it's my meditation every single day I think more more critical to my mental health is getting in the habit of keeping promises that I make to myself and not ever allowing myself to fall into the habit of breaking them. Ooh, that looks really good. I know that. Very nice. <laughs> Gotta give Claudius some water. He's very thirsty. We take good care of our trees here. Food vlogging space. Who did you learn this trick from? The Korean vegan. Watch me spill it all over though, because my spoon is too big. That's perfect. Look at it trip down the sides. Probably the biggest commitment I've made to myself in the past decade is going vegan. And a lot of people have asked me, well, have you ever cheated on going vegan? To be honest, I haven't. I haven't ever really been tempted to do so. But a related question that I often get asked is, well, what's the hardest thing about going vegan? And I think a lot of people expect me to answer bacon or samgyeopsal. But the truth is, missing the food has never been the real challenge for me. Undoubtedly, one of the most frustrating aspects of going vegan is traveling while vegan. I remember the first time I went on an international flight while vegan, I didn't think to order my meals in advance because I never had to do that before. And as a result, I spent nine hours on an airplane with nothing to eat but potato chips. It was not a pleasant flight and even more unpleasant the day after. 
The truth is, when I was a working professional, I really hated traveling because I only ever had to travel for work and I associated traveling with missing my dogs, missing my house, missing my husband, not really good feelings. And the first thing I would do as soon as I checked into my hotel because I was depressed and lonely was order a really greasy, juicy cheeseburger off of the dine-in menu. Obviously, those days are long gone. Now, I don't miss hamburgers, but I do miss the ability to just walk into any situation, whether it's an airport, an airplane, a hotel, or even a restaurant in the middle of anywhere, and know that I can find something to eat. And while things have definitely gotten better in most urban areas of the world, it's still a gamble to travel without doing some planning in advance if you're vegan. My husband loves traveling, and as a result, I've been doing a lot more traveling for fun since we met in 2014. I went vegan in the beginning of 2016, and since then, I've traveled all over the world. Rome, Barcelona, London, Seoul, Turin, and Mississippi. <laughs> and in that time, I figured out what works for me to ensure I never have to relive that horrible nothing but six bags of potato chip situation on American Airlines ever again. I'm ready for the day. I'm preparing some oats for Joanne. Overnight oats, first layer. Granola, second layer. Some yogurt, dairy-free of course. Yeah, I'm gonna have this for dessert tonight. Okay, we're gonna decorate this with some fruit right now. Raspberries. We'll leave it up to the boss as to whether she wants some cinnamon or maple syrup on top, or both. First, eat a hearty but not a heavy meal in advance. I like to eat something that's high in protein, low in fat before traveling. Something that'll fill me up but not give me the dreaded bloat while on the airplane. Oh, this is amazing, babe. And no, I don't like eating at the airport. Why? Well, options are slim and a lot of the food there is really highly processed, which is the last thing, honestly, that you want to put into your body right before getting into an airplane with limited bathroom access. So tell us about your kind of methodology <laughs> for perfecting the overnight oat game. Mm. What is your strategy? Like when you go in at night, to soak those oats. What are you thinking? It's really all in here. <laughs> Read the instructions, measure things out. But if you don't have the heart and soul for it, you know, you're just making your way towards the mediocre category. Mm -hmm. We don't do mediocre here in the Korean vegan house. Mm. Sometimes I do. <sighs> Touch of uh, dairy free yogurt. This is so good. Bye, babe. Goodbye. Last week of school. Will I see you before I leave for LA? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, bye. Your show starts at 2, right? Yeah. Okay, bye. As for my cooking demonstration, it is so good. I literally got the hiccups because I was scarfing it down so quickly. Unfortunately, I have to head out to my flight uh, right now. Otherwise, I would eat a lot more. This is a mess. That is my kitchen. Second, well, not all options at the airport are terrible. Because I have traveled so much over the past couple of years, I get free access to the airport lounge where I can pick up some coffee. <laughs> Definitely like to have a little bit of coffee before I get on an airplane, as well as some fresh fruit in case I get hungry on the flight. Every airport I have ever been to has had at least a couple places where you can pick up a banana, an apple, something fresh and something not processed. Third, order your in-flight meal in advance. They almost always have a vegan option. Here, I wasn't able to order in advance because it was a shorter flight. I just asked my flight attendant, hey, can you just put on the tray everything that's vegan? And that's exactly what she did. Fourth, look up the menus of in-hotel dining options in advance. Most of them are online, and if you're staying somewhere that doesn't have a lot of options, check out the local restaurant scene. I use Happy Cow, Yelp, and Google Maps. 
Luckily, I'm meeting a friend who's been to Encino dozens of times and knows exactly where to take us for dinner. And finally, travel with friends. I know that's not always an option, but if it is, definitely highly recommend whether you're vegan or not, but particularly if you are vegan. Not only is it easier to find something when more than one person is looking, it's actually fun to try new places together and you get to try their food. Whatever your commitment is, whether it's to eat vegan, eat healthier, run regularly, doing a little bit of planning in advance can make it easier for you to stick to it. But the most important thing to remember when things get a little bit hard or frustrating is that you're worth it. I know, right? I'm so excited.